Chapter 2 is all about linear equations, so we're going to start with writing equations and then solving one-step equations. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to translate sentences into equations and then solve equations by using addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So think back to Chapter 1. We learned some key words that should trigger other words in your mind. Things like more than, some, plus, increased by, or added to should all remind you of addition. Less than, subtracted from, difference, decreased by, and minus should remind you of subtraction. Product, multiplied by, times, and of should all remind you of multiplication. And then the quotient and divided by should remind you of division. So all we're going to do today is add one more word. Anytime you see the word is, that means equals. So if we translate these sentences into equations, we literally just have to read it and then figure out what it looks like in math. So 7 times a number squared is 5 times the difference of k and m. So I'm going to go through here. We have 7 times some number, so let's make it x, and that number's got to be squared. This is our new word, so is 5 times the difference, remember that means subtraction of k and m, so we got to subtract k and m. So now let's write this as an actual math sentence. 7x squared is going to equal 5 times k minus m. And we're not solving this, we're not simplifying it, we're just writing it as an equation. So let's try the next one. 15 times a number subtracted from 80 is 25. So 15 times a number subtracted from 80, that's important, is, is our new word, 25. So the thing that makes this one a little different is you have 15 times a number and you want to subtract that from 80, which means that we started with 80 and we want to take away 15 times a number. And then this has to equal 25. And just like the last one, we're not solving anything, we're just writing it out. So now let's try doing this with kind of a story. A rule for the relationship between certain quantities is called a formula. These equations use variables to represent numbers and form general rules. So let's translate this sentence into a formula. In a right triangle, the square of the measure of the hypotenuse C is equal to the sum of the squares of the measures of the legs A and B. So we have a right triangle. If you remember from last year, the hypotenuse is what's across from the right angle, and our legs are A and B. So hopefully this is starting to look familiar. But it says the square of the hypotenuse, so we're going to take the hypotenuse and square it, is equal to, so we need an equal sign, the sum, which is plus, of the squares of the legs, which is A and B. So that means we're going to have A and B squared, and then some, remember, meant that we were going to add them together. This is the Pythagorean theorem, but we can take those words and turn it into a math equation. So now let's get to solving. We have four properties that you need to know, and chances are you already know these without actually having seen them before, but we have the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division properties of equality. And they state that as long as you do one operation to one side of an equation, it stays exactly equal. So if we read the fancy stuff, it says if an equation is true and the same number is added to each side of the equation, the resulting equivalent equation is also true. So let's say we start with something like x equals 3, and this is true. If you add the same thing to both sides, plus 2, plus 2, then x plus 2 equals 5 is also true. 
And chances are you can already solve this in your head. We would subtract 2 from both sides. And we would end up with this, that x would have to equal 3 in that case. The subtraction property works exactly the same way, except you're adding a negative number. So the multiplication and division properties are very similar. So if you have something like x equals 5, and then if you look, all we did was multiply both sides by 3 here and here. This is also true and x would be 5 here. Division property works exactly the same way. So if I gave you something like 3x equals 15, and we divided by 3 on both sides, x equals 5 is exactly the same as 3x equals 15. So these properties here, like some of the other properties we studied in chapter 1, allow us to solve equations. They allow us to do one thing on one side and the same thing on the other side of the equation and still make it true. So let's solve some equations. I'm going to do all the a's here, 1a, 2a, and 3a, and then I'll leave the b's for you to do. So this first one here, we got to get g by itself. So we look and hanging out with g is a negative 25 or it's being subtracted 25. So we're going to do the opposite of that. And whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So these here cross off. Remember what really happens is we end up with g plus 0. This right here is the additive identity inverse. This is the additive identity. So because of that, we really just end up with g. And then if we add 113 and 25 together, we end up with 138. So that's the value that g has to equal in order for that equation to be true. Let's try the next one. So we have 27 plus k equals 30. This one, chances are numbers popping into your head that makes this true, but if we want to solve it with algebra, we're going to do the opposite of positive 27, which is subtract 27 from both sides. This crosses off. Remember, we're using the inverse and the identity properties, and we get that k has to equal 3 in order for this to be true. Now, the next one's a little weirder because it's a fraction. And now if you remember anything from last year, there's two ways that you can do this. You can divide both sides by 3 fifths because you're multiplying. These cross off. We're using our inverse and identity properties. And then we have to do 6 divided by 3 fifths. And think back to chapter 0 when we did fractions. You keep it, change it, flip it. So we end up with 30 thirds, which is just 10. So k is 10. The other thing you can do is multiply by the reciprocal, because remember, reciprocals will give you 1. So the reciprocal of this is 5 thirds. which is the same thing we did down here, it just kind of skips a couple steps. So this gives us plain old k, this gives us 30 thirds again, which is 10. So if you want to divide or multiply by the reciprocal, it doesn't really matter, whatever one seems easier to you. So try 1b, 2b, and 3b on your own, as well as the story here. So this story is the can you translate sentences into equations and then can you solve them all wrapped into one problem. So give yourself some solving practice with these three and then some translating practice with this one. Make sure if you have any questions that you write them down and we can go over them in class tomorrow. Enjoy your night.